so we're 20k from Gunung Padang just heading into the nearby village which is where we're going to be staying for a few days and this is going to be our first experience of this uh, incredibly ancient megalithic temple pyramid site so uh should be quite a trip eh Andy? Yeah absolutely and um, uh, I mean whatever the controversy about the site and its ages and whatever this is the largest megalithic complex in the whole of Southeast Asia and that's got to be special alone. Yeah, but when you're at the Pintu Kereta Api Pasar, kan? The, there is a, uh, there's a sacred spring at the very base of the steps that go up to you know, the dam. And that this, um, this, this, this spring is seen as sacred by the local people. And there's a tradition that before you go up there, you should take some of this water um, or wash or something. And that, um, you know, I think this is a good way to start the journey up there because I like adhering to local traditions. Just making our way up the first part of Gunung Padang, going up the 300 or more steps. Uh, so we're just going to... Another interesting mark. Oh, we keep, uh, Danny's pointing out some quite strange marks on some of the steps, Another including mark. cut marks. So uh, let's take a closer look without trying to get too much water on the lens. Everyone likes their photo taken with the Englishman. Yeah. <laughs> and these steps are, although they're made of andesite blocks like those of the megalithic structure, uh, were probably only put in place around 1980. Uh, prior to that time, there was no exact path up to the top. Um, and also, there may also have been another uh, path to the summit from the, on the east side. Okay, we have arrived at the first terrace of Gudum Padang. Um, and we've been greeted with literally hundreds, if not thousands, of, uh, of andesite blocks uh, ranging in size from about half a metre to about a metre and a half uh, in size, which clearly have formed part of an incredibly large structure that was present here in the past. And we look straight up and we can see this rock mound known um, as the the, the crown of the world um, or the crown of the earth which seems to have been this place of sacrifice in the past uh, and just beyond it on the slope or at the base of the slope, slope going from terrace one to terrace two could be the entrance into this underground realm here at Gudum Padang leading into an artificial chamber um, or maybe a natural chamber that's been enhanced in some way and perhaps was the central focus of the veneration or worship that was going on here in the past. The fact that this place is called the, um, the crown of the earth suggests the subject of sovereignty. Uh, perhaps it was the place where the king ruled from, uh, his seat. Um, and because of this, this was the main focus, perhaps, of this site. So this is a very, very powerful and impo uh, uh, important point, and one we should examine further. These andesite columns are everywhere. There's tens of thousands of them, I think. Many of them, though, have got cut marks on them, which is the first thing we noticed in some of the steps on the way up, which is a tradition we find in Britain, and obviously at Tiwanaku in Malta, and Gebe even Gebekli Tepe, which could be contemporary here with Gunung Padang. So my thesis is, the one who make a standing stone is not the same as the one who make this altar, make that wall, terrace wall over there. Really? So is so. So do you think this relates to the terrace? Um, sorry, layer one. Yes. This standing does. Rock is layer one. 
Yeah. They make this this kind of space over there. Right, like a stone setting, as we'd, we'd call it. Yeah. Um, but you think that the, the, the rock mound, the, the altar, um, is from an earlier period? Yeah, earlier period, yes. Okay. Yeah, too. That's the same period as the, wa the, that's the wall, rock okay. wall over there. Right, okay. A step, that's three steps. Okay. It's like a step, oh, stepping up, I right. see, yeah. So uh, that's one of the test pit over there. Yeah. So it's only less than one meter we have a floor of this guy. Like right, right. Two. And um, I noticed uh, in this uh, little rectangular stone setting that there's a large slab uh -huh. face down. Any, has any thoughts, any thoughts on that? Is, is that also andesite or yes, it looks a different colour? Yes, but it's a different kind. It's not columnar joint rocks. It's right. slab of rocks. Okay. Yeah. Um, and presumably it is um, meant to be in this particular stone setting. Has it been there for a long time, do you think? Yes, that, that's... Okay. That's there. So that, that could be some kind of, of altar or something like that. Some kind for that. So uh, one of my colleagues believes that that space is for sacrifice animals like cows. Right. So they bring the cows over there onto the altar and sacrifice right. the okay. cows over there. All right. Um, so the pit that you were talking about, is that behind the rock mound? The you said that there was like a pit or something where sacrifices may have been. Below this, there, there's, uh, there's some interesting features as we look on the geo geoelectric, there's some yeah. kind of chamber below that, like yeah. five meters down. So right, five okay, that, that's down. really interesting. So obviously that's very old, because if this doesn't relate to layer mm -hmm. one, yeah. maybe layer two or three or something like so. that, then the yeah. chamber could be much older. Yes. So yes. perhaps pre-8000 BC, according to your reckoning, of the age of the different I think layers. The chamber is belong to, yeah, to, to, to belong to the layers two or three, but I think it's layer three. That is, yeah, it's more okay. than 8000 species. So, that is, so beneath That's here right. is a chamber that is quite possibly the same age as Gobekli Tepe, perhaps even older, um, and that it is just possible that that also has some link into the underground system that leads to the great hollow cavity, which itself could be an artificial chamber, um, and if not an artificial chamber, pa perhaps an enhanced mm. lava tube. Um, so these are all part of, of, of a much greater structure that exists beneath the main stone settings that you see here today, most of which date to the so-called metal age, um, or the very late Neolithic, which probably we would say, what, 1500 to 2500 BC, something yeah. like that. So underneath where I stand here now is something infinitely older, uh, something many, many thousands of years, almost certainly pre-8000 BC. So we're just leaving uh, Gunung Padang, which also means the Mountain of Light and we're gonna head back down now and come back tomorrow. And hopefully there is a bit more light, a bit more sunshine. My first impressions are that this is awesome. This is an incredible site. Uh, it's much bigger than I expected. There's much more stone here than I realized. And both Andrew and I are just blown away by this. There's something very, very important here. And I, and I think like Gebekli Tepe, there's a lot more to be discovered. Gurumpadang is an incredible site. Um, I visited it for the first time today. Um, we've climbed from the steps uh, and the, the, the Holy Spring right up to the first terrace where we're greeted by this massive rock mound um, in the middle of the, um, the, the first terrace. Um, and this apparently is known as the um, uh, as the, the the crown of the of the land, uh, or the crown of the earth, or the crown of, of the world. Um, and this seems to suggest the idea of uh, of sovereignty, the idea of kings and queens. Um, but we know that this also marks possibly the entrance into a underground chamber that has been detected by geophysical um, research at the site and, and other methods. So this area here is very, very important. Apparently, maybe uh, sacrifices took place here 
uh, and also there is evidence that here the stones um, are from an earlier period, uh, what they call layer two, whereas most of the smaller little stone settings in uh, squares and rectangles are from level one. Now level one dates to the Metal Age. Uh, the Metal Age is around 2500 to 1500 BC. Um, but we're talking about much older structures uh, for level 2 and for level 3, perhaps as early as 8000 BC. But then when we climb a huge 9 metre step onto the second level, we see hundreds and hundreds of andesite blocks uh, as if there has been various building structures here that, that were created uh, probably by hundreds or if not thousands of people uh, with for a great purpose, something was going on here. Um, it was almost as if there was a, a bigger purpose, very much like people coming together to create Stonehenge in England or the Great Pyramid in Egypt, that there was, a, there was something happening here that had to be done. Um, and then we climb even higher to levels three and levels four, and the stones start getting smaller and smaller. They've gone from being a metre and a half in size, now there are no more than about half a metre. And clearly, I think this is from a later period, probably from this, this level one. Uh, and then you reach the final terrace, level five, and there is an area of, um, of uh, andesite blocks forming a pavement on the ground in a rectangle, and this felt immediately like it was for a, maybe a king or a queen or a princess to stand and to watch the activity on the lower te terraces um, and maybe beyond towards the volcano, the Gede volcano, towards, towards which this monument is unquestionably orientated. Um, and we find that this floor is indeed known as the throne suggesting a connection with sovereignty, with kings, with queens. And the story is that this is where the king would stand and that to the left of this would be where his uh, queen would stand and to the right of the king would be his high priest. Um, so there is lots of activity going on here. Um, but I believe that the core of this connects with the volcano to which the monument is facing, but also rites and rituals and ceremonies that connect with royal people, people in charge of probably this kingdom, a kingdom that would have stretched out to encompass the whole of the Sinjar Basin. Um, I believe that this would have been their, their domain, their territory, um, and that they had to keep control of this. This is what sovereignty is. The king is connected with the land. The land is connected with the king. And as long as the king has control, then the land is okay. If the land is in chaos, the king is in chaos as well and maybe has to replace. So there's a connection between the two. And I think that, that this is what was going on here at Ganung Padang in the past. The, the andesite blocks popping out of the side of the, the hill lower down, can't you? Even on the, the eastern side. We have to see that the arrangement of the second layer is more advanced of this one. Yeah, yeah. This is more coarse, you know, it's not yeah. As, yeah. as tight as the second layer. Yeah. What I find interesting here is you've got these two stones yeah. that are jutting out. Yeah. That's so clearly done on purpose. Yeah. So, uh, notice that. We have the test bit over there. Yeah. So this first layer is only covered like no more than one meter of this block. Behind this is the second layer. Okay. So. So. And it, this yeah. is sticking. Is this sticking out from the second layer? No. This is the first layer. Okay. I but but clearly these yeah. are a marker for something because otherwise why would you stick them out uh, and not I make the whole thing flush? Yeah. My architecture. Guy think this is some it is for strengthening the structures. And they're clearly not for agricultural purposes, they're yeah. an extension of yeah. the entire 
a hilltop mon monument, um, you know, a deeper level, uh, yeah. which, uh, which, which shows us that the terraces that we've got, that we can see now, are simply yeah. the surface, you know, almost like the icing on the cake, so to speak, and that below that is something incredible and very big and very megalithic. In some area, though, uh, on the north side, there are the stone terraces which has uh, a wider, uh, a wider terrace, flat surfaces, right. and people use it for uh, agriculture. agriculture. But they said, "Well, I just use it as as is, as natural gift, so they don't need the terraces." Right. Okay. So we're now down on the southeastern corner below Terrace Five. Yeah. Um, and we've already seen on the west side. And on the east side, the, yeah. the, the andesite blocks continue yeah. uh, and show that there's an inner core here. And um, here we are again uh, with many of these blocks yeah. which uh, are, are sticking out the side, showing that, that everywhere they are I mean, completely covered. I mean, this is not a solid structure, this is made up of these blocks. Yeah. So uh, we cut all this all these bushes uh, last year so then we can clearly see the stone terraces stone terraces step so one another steps over here another step over here there's all rocks sticking out um, let me see so you know we're, we're talking about it going down like a pyramid structure it's like pyramid. Yeah. yeah. It's like something. That's all these rocks. Another step over here. Okay. Right now, this this is interesting then, mm. because here we can clearly see that this is the edge of a terrace here, Still um, and it continues on. There. There's an, there's another one here. Yeah. Quite clearly, you you can see the edge of it, because you can see the shape of it, and this shows that we really are on a pyramid hill um, and that the, the core of this has been designed to make it into a pyramid. Um, and I mean, how far down these andesite blocks go? Uh, how, uh, how, we, many, uh, yeah. how many meters would you say? Yes, we estimate that this, uh, this step pyramids uh, made by these blocks, it's all over the side. So at least 100 meter uh, Height in from height. the top to the parking level, so to down there, even to the to the stream level, 200 right, meters high. Right. So we're talking about a pyramid hill here that's 100 meters tall, and that's quite extraordinary. And I mean, if this was all uncovered, um, you know, it would be certainly as impressive as the Great Pyramid in Egypt. Right. Okay. We're, we're on we're on one of the terraces now. Uh, one of the edges of them, which uh, shows that this, this is a pyramid hill. Um, here's the edge of it here. It carries on like this, look, see? Um, and um, it shows, apparently this goes all the way down the hill, shows that this is a pyramid structure of basically uh, 100 uh, metres in height, which is absolutely extraordinary. But right here we've got uh, another couple of huge uh, andesite blocks, um, absolutely quite massive, um, sticking out vertically from the, the, the side um, of the hill here on the southeast uh, corner. So, what can you tell us about these? Well, this is one of the steps with the big stones of it, big rock columns. Well, these are quite large, these ones are. Yeah, these are yeah. larger than the normal ones. There's some yeah. corner that has huge uh, blocks. Very nice. So these look to me, Danny, oh, these are like multi-ton blocks. I mean, how do you know how long yeah. these are? Uh, and this one looks broken as well. It's at least one meter would be up to... So it's sticking into the rock, so we can't say exactly, but it could be, you know, a, a, a meter and a half, two meters in long, in length. But all that we can see at the moment is, is about a meter's worth. Um, but I mean, this, this would clearly take it up into the regions of uh, 500 kilos and upwards, possibly a ton. Um, but they're, they're impressive and they're side by side and they're both extremely large blocks. So maybe, there is, is there a sort of speculation that 
there could be stuff that's not been excavated there could be much bigger blocks but lower down you go or could be I, I guess because on the other side they're standard size blocks aren't they yeah mm. yeah maybe tomorrow I think we might need a machete but I mean that's impressive and look that there, there's more beneath them I think this yeah. is the important thing this I mean, is incredible you know they're, they're not they're not isolated blocks so you know I mean, standing are, on more yeah. yeah I mean the whole thing's just made of them isn't it really yeah. so it's, yeah it's incredible yeah. Yeah, this is a problem of our work here. Uh, we are currently on still on the research uh, stage. So on, when we clean up all these uh, these bushes, and we can see the stone terraces, the step pyramids, quite clearly, if we get rid mm. of this, all these bushes. Mm. But then uh, we cannot preserve them. So we have to uh, restore them again into these bushes. Yeah, so, so nature that, reclaims why, them again. Like nature also reclaims them again. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's why uh, for the next stage we have to go into the rest restoration uh, stage so you can clean them up and preserve them, restore them into uh, a better stage, okay. make it open. Oh. So there's, I mean, there's just potentially artifacts, treasure, anything could be found here still because you haven't, there's not hardly anything has been dug. Yes. It's incredible. Yeah, not so much. It's, it's almost like a almost pristine site, I guess, when you, you found it. Yeah. Right. And um, when it was first discovered back in the early 1900s, was it, um, what was it thought of then? Was it just thought of a more relatively modern site? Uh, no, uh, they just thought it's an ancient cemetery. Okay. And that's it, that's the report of, from the Dutch. Because the, the, the cemeteries in Java often contain standing stones. That's right. Oh, okay. So, you know, they could have been created a few hundred years ago, yeah. you know, or a maximum of a thousand yeah. years ago. You know the tradition of building standing stones and small stone enclosures is almost th right the way through to you know the, the contemporary period you know the, the modern day okay yeah and so also you have to remember that uh, at that time it's been a lot of big trees here like uh, you know jungle uh, very yeah thick yeah. trees and what yeah. this, what they see is only uh, uh, a standing uh, some blocks of rocks and standing rocks on top of the side so they think it's only that okay but I didn't, they didn't realize there was anything further foundation. That's right. Even yeah. until 1980, they don't realize that there's still much more on this side, on, on the slope of the mm. hills, until I come here. And then first, I do the GPR, the ground penetration radar, off this side. And to do that, I have to cut down the trees so my antenna can mm. get down. But when I cut down the trees, I saw these steps and said, what the heck, this is the stone terraces is still continuing down there. So I call my archaeologist, Mali Akbar, and I show them. And they said, oh my God, I come here every year with my student, and I never know that <laughs> still much down there. So that's the story. But did they accept mm. that it was an extension of the megalithic site, though? Yes, some archaeologists, of course, including Ali Akbar, very sure this is the, the original steps. and. He also interviewed the local people here and, you know, asking, do any of you, your father, your grandfather, make this? They said, no, it's just been there for, you know, for a long time. And if you're looking on the steps, the, the steps uh, between the, the, step, uh, the, the, the flat areas, between the, uh, the cliff, is just too short for, you know, for uh, farming. For, oh. for the like uh, growing vegetation, because it's also tradition, right, to make the the step terrace of the yeah, uh, yeah. for for the farming. Mm. But agriculture. This one is not for that because it's no. just not enough. It's it's, it's very uh, narrow. Yeah, so it's original. Cool. Megalithic. It's very megalithic. We I mean, look. <laughs> We just examined these these huge oh, look, blocks. Got the missing on it, this one. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, this these are blocks down here are huge, and um, I mean, they really do show that there is an incredibly large structure just below the surface of of, of the actual uh, jungle area, um, and th this is this is you know very very old. I mean. This is 5,000 years BC and almost certainly 8,000 and could be a lot older than that. So it's certainly contemporary with Gebekli Tepe in uh, Anatolia. So, you know, we really need to know who made this.
and exactly why. We're getting an idea of why, but we don't know the who yet. She's brilliant, isn't it? Just a, you know, just a few meters down from the top, where we're discovering stuff like this. The artifact. Yeah. Is from this test pit over here. Oh, you mean the 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 what? Not the one that get no, the the the, the trowel, as we call it. That's right. Yeah. Um, that was found down here. Yeah. You see, the interesting thing about that is that some skeptics might say, "Oh, it's it's a natural stone," but the problem with that is that. It is. It looks fragile. If this was, if it was in the ground for too long, it would be destroyed. In other words, if this was, um, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of years old, it would, it would, it would fragment because mm. of the, the pressure on mm. it. And that suggests that it's actually quite modern. I mean, what I mean, modern in geological terms. So that basically does um, indicate that it is manufactured. It's artifact indeed. The the shape of that. Uh it's clearly showing it's an, an uh, artificial cut, no doubt. No. All the archaeology says that, all people, and it's, it's a perfect geometry for the uh, nature to, to shape that. Uh, the nature usually shape a bit rounded on the surface, but this one is pretty sharp, pretty good. In, uh, and also, uh, what we have to emphasize here, that artifact is found on the bottom of the soil fields here. This is an artificial soil field. Right. No certification, so just in the bottom of that, uh, in the boundary between the soil fields and the surface of the uh, layer three. Okay. The third layer. And the soil fields uh, age 10,000 years or 8,000 BC. Right. So right. I think that is the minimum age of that artifact. 10,000 years old. Yes. Can you just describe it? I mean, I know we don't have it with us at the moment, but just describe what it looks like. It looks like the triangle and you twist it. So it's triangle like that, you twist it that, like that. Right. It's become narrow and then uh, wider again. So in general, the shape is like Kujang. Kujang is the sacred weapon of the Sunanese people, the West Java. So we call it the Batu Kujang, okay. the Kujang stone and the properties of that artifact is, is is specular or special because it looks like andesite but it's not andesite it's porous has a pores on it very evenly like uh, pumice but pumice is very light but this is very heavy and the, the density of this artifact Kujang is about 3.4 gram per centimeter cubic which is significantly heavier than the andesite. Andesite is only 2.7, 2.5 to 2.8. Uh, this is heavier because there are lots of metal grains on it uh, that distribute uh, evenly throughout the rock. So the properties of rock is, is peculiar. I haven't known that on geology, kind of andesite, but it's not andesite. Okay, so it, it could be a type of uh, tufa rock you know mm, volcanic tufa yeah, but, but with a heavy iron. uh metal content yeah lots of irons on it you yes. know so that 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 gives it the weight yes and possibly yes. even the um the the the, the hardness mm -hmm. so and pause also if you so if you touch it you, uh, you you will feel rough on it like you you touch the pumice the volcanic pumice on it. okay so the chances are it probably is volcanic that the, the object uh, is made from a volcanic rock but exactly what type of volcanic rock we're yes. not sure and it's not necessarily native from this site no not okay. necessarily yeah. Yeah. cool well hopefully we can see this on yeah. the 28th if that is possible i don't think it's interesting on this south side yeah uh, you cannot find uh, that the columnar rock joint, the rock column on the south side slope. Not yet. Okay. No. That, that's very strange of it. We haven't really fully understand, but so the boundary between the stone terraces is like over there on the bushes. So here it's soils, very thick soils of that. So uh, according to our subsurface structures over there, it seems to be on here, there's a steep wall. That's oh, one okay. of the reasons why we right. dig that, because we, we are trying to find the door, the gate, to the chamber. So that's one of the purpose 
way we dig here. Okay. Well, that, uh, that, that, yeah. that would be a very interesting feature yeah. to yeah. discover. Yeah, so that, that's walls. also one, uh, our one hypothesis that there is an entrance from the south side. So what you said, just to clarify, you're yeah. saying that this is all just mud here, basically. So and, and, and there's potentially a, a straight wall made up of the columns, the, the, the uh, andesite rocks. columns. Rocks, yeah. Yeah, yeah andesite rocks. So straight kind of going down. That's very interesting. It's yeah. like a retaining wall. Yes, something like that. So we are, we are, we are hoping that we find a gate I could, I goes could, in. I could also suggest that the stones will get larger the lower you go because with retaining walls, that's what happens. You need a much larger block at the bottom. They are blocks, yeah. yeah. And that's what we Over saw there. around the, um, the west mm -hmm. side briefly. But what we found here, the, 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 rock, the, the rock here is not column. It's rounded. Oh. It's different here. It's, it's also, uh, you know, it's complicated here. So, so it, when you say rounded, you, you mean rounded, like a bowl? Rounded, like the stones that we uh, see on the river. Like river. Uh, rounded because oh, okay. of transportation, natural transportation, so it's rounded. Okay. Yeah, so that also make, uh, make it clear that it's not natural because we are on the top of the hill. We should not found, uh, found the rounded rocks here. So it's part, it, this, is a, this is a building, a structure that made by that blocks of rounded stones over here on this part. But, but what is, the, have you found any large blocks, so rounded blocks? I mean, what is the largest one that you found to date? Uh, well, we have the test pit here. The larger one is right like that. We have the drilling. Uh, well, we have the test pit also over here, down to 11 meters. Yep. Uh, the larger one is like your head bigger a bit yeah so okay like 50 centimeters maybe that's the largest one but you know uh, we haven't dig enough so no so I, hope you, I presume so far you've not found any human remains human you know, remains. yeah and any you know skeletal remains no okay no. it's interesting I mean it's interesting that you that they're not here in a way because it's clearly a, a, an artificial structure, mm -hmm. um, you would think that um, there should be some kind of, um, yeah. you know, human debris yeah. uh, would it be here. The, uh, the climate would destroy the bones. I think so. If uh, thousands, of, thousands of years, uh, the bones will be destroyed into soil. Yes. No remaining. Mm. Yeah. One more thing that emphasizes this: you see this mound, this soil. Yeah. This yeah. Soil. Yeah. So it it is. It's very certain that this soil is, is not natural, it's all man-made and the thick is up to 7 meters thick, all the fields. Right, so are you, are you saying that they would have imported this uh, soil to this, dumped transported it, yeah. and dumped yeah, it? Yeah, to, to cover the uh, second and the third layer. Right. Yeah. Right, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Here's uh, yeah. an example. Oh my that? God. Is that drill? That is our drill, drill course. So you, you drilled that? I drilled that. Okay. Before we excavated that. Yeah, so, so you see that? Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know. That's your drill core. Yeah, so in the drill course, what we see is uh, uh, the rock blocks, like this thing. Uh, when we drill it, we think it's a uh, same column rock. <laughs> that we uh, penetrate with the drill. But when we excavated that, we just surprised that it's not that. This uh, rounded blocks like this. So like this, so usually we, we, we find it on the river because the block, the block is rounded because of the transportation. Yeah. Natural. Yeah. But it's in the top of the mountain, so. so right. The people bring it here. So basically these are the stones that potentially make up the retaining wall on the south exactly side. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I've not seen anything like this uh, any other place on the on the hill. So, you know, these are quite unique to this yes. this area. Yes. Yeah. So, and also we can you have to remember that in the geology, if you correlate the lithology, that is impossible. We see the 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 rock columns over there, and then suddenly <laughs> change into this one. So that is not natural. Definitely, it's a mm. it's a building. <laughs> 
the great work that, uh, that Dan Hillman is doing here um, is really opening up this site. Uh, it's made it um, a, a subject of international news stories, which is how I myself came to hear about it in England. Um, and myself and, and my colleagues are writing about it in books and in articles. Um, and the, uh, the presidency of, um, of Java are fully behind the work going on here. And that in the coming years, I believe that this will become uh, a very major tourist attraction. I think this is good because it will generate more scientific interest in the site, but also it will generate um, tourism um, and money for Java of people coming here uh, on vacation, on holidays, um, to see this place, as well as the other great sites of Java like Bora Buddha um, uh, and places you know, like the Great Museum in Jakarta uh, and many other sites that um, tourists see today. Anything unusual happening there? Not really, I think it's my compass looks fine. Okay. And I don't have to move that. But, but I'm trying because uh, at last time my friend using not the same compass, a smaller one, uh, another type of compass and his uh, needles is going like crazy like that okay. over here. So okay. I wonder whether that is not constantly uh, producing electromagnetic with just like occasionally or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Interesting, so nothing's happening right now, but if we keep walking about, we might get something. So, so where, where was he getting that, that anomaly? Was it just where you were standing there, sort of going up the hill slightly? You know, the, uh, these anomalies could actually be caused by, by some kind of uh, geological uh, you know, a uh, fault or some kind of disturbance or something like that. We've just been told that, uh, that gold was mined in this area uh, and there's still a, uh, a natural cave that was used by prospectors seemingly to, to look for gold. But water flows from this and very little is known about it and it's in the Karahun Mountains immediately to the south of Gudum Padang. So whether we'll be able to uh, explore this whilst we're here, I don't know but we're looking for a, an even bigger cave, which we've also heard exists in this area. Plus, obviously, we shall be trying to look for megalithic sites as well. So most of these could have been handled by just a few people, probably moving yeah, into place. Yeah, this, I think we need like four to five, five people. But if they've got to bring them from the uh, ground level up, yeah, that's a whole different story. Yeah, that's big job. Yeah. Okay. And is there any more mortar up here? Can you see? Is it just that when we looked earlier, we saw? Is there any other examples of mortar on this level here? Water. Mortar, like cement. Oh. Uh, I think that there are lots of modification in the surface, so uh, people. Ah, oh, there are. There you go. Ah, uh, yes. That's the original. Also. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. So was did the whole site have mortar so, uh, built between the blocks, or was it just certain levels? The second layers. Second layers. The second layers. The, the older one, the 5000 BC one, has that. The the third layers also has matrix like this, similar. 
So the second and the third layers has this kind of fillers. And exactly what, what composition is that? This is mostly iron minerals and silica. Okay, and that's from the local area? Could be, because we are on the volcanic um, zone, which okay. has lots of volcanic materials, has that, uh, that uh, iron and silica okay. minerals. Okay, brilliant. Well, thanks very much, Danny. Thanks sure. for pointing out all these uh, anomalies. I'm going to go around each one and just sort of mm-hmm. feel into it a bit, film it and see if I can get my compass mm-hmm. doing anything strange. The geometry strange. is an interesting thing, I think, what we can see here. Uh, we saw several locations about the second level and what we see here, the orientation of this, this rock column is about 60, 60 to 70, uh, 70, 70 degree northeast, okay. which is similar to what we see on the, uh, uh, below that. Uh, so it's, it's actually in the right angle to the long axis of this side. But if we look into that, the, the, the bottom one below this layer is a bit deviated slightly, about 15 degrees. So that one is oriented like 55 degrees. So, but that is similar to what we see on the, uh, the second and the third level, that the arrangement of the column. So there are two arrangements. One is uh, perpendicular to the side. The other is a bit deviated, like diagonal to it. So okay. And um, and this different type of stone, like the what potentially some people call the altar stone. This one. What is that made of? This one also the the orange, the orange kind of. Oh, the orange one. Yeah, that's different rocks. That is not 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 the columnar joint rocks, not the column rocks, but it's a slab of rock. That absolutely different. And this one also, it has a special meaning of that. You see that uh, rocks yes. with the flat surfaces. Yes. Uh, we call it is the is a sound rock or music rock because it's uh, if you uh, if you tap it you, you get tap it you get a different sound oh okay <laughs> so it's like acoustic acoustic yeah, it's an acoustic okay, okay, okay. One. so uh, some people think it's, it's about acoustic so, so uh, these three down here three or four right. yeah, yeah okay you can try it with, with our hand if one okay yeah we'll do that now it, it might cost by the lots of iron on it okay yeah okay Collins. So this is just the road leading out of Gunung Padang eastwards and these are some rice paddies um, just nearby and it makes me question was Gunung Padang um, actually an agricultural terracing system like we find in Peru? It's one of these things that's kind of intrigued me uh, about Gunung Padang because officially there's nothing said about that. Danny Hillman says there's no evidence of agriculture going way back but I'm very interested because the magnetic anomalies there just sort of don't add up unless they have some purpose. Why would you choose a site that has them um, if there's no purpose there? And they were obviously known about because they were marked by stone. So this is why I think this rice paddy behind me, I think this is this terracing system, which is what you get in Peru as well. There may be something in that. And uh, I'm sure more evidence will eventually surface to prove that because you know, if you're going to survive anywhere, you need food. Gudum Badang could be several thousand years older than the Great Pyramid, several thousand years older than Stonehenge in my own country of England, um, and that it was constructed perhaps even shortly after the last ice age, um, which came to an end around 1350, uh, uh, 13,500 BC um, and that there was a lot of activity going on at the, the, the end of the last ice age not only here but in other countries as well. We know that there's a place called Gobekli Tepe in Anatolia which is uh, modern day Turkey. Um, this is a huge series of stone structures like you find here at Gudum Badang uh, and we know this dates to between uh, about 8,000 to 9,500 BC. Um, this, there is no doubt 
uh, and there are other monuments around the world that could equally be as old. So we must start reviewing all the evidence that we have for megalithic monuments everywhere because all of them could have a much older core which we've overlooked until now.